Now let's look at the next question, which asks you to identify the incorrect statement. So let's look at the first one, which says uncontrolled diabetes can lead to ketoacidosis due to an excess breakdown of fats. Uh, this is true because in diabetes, since the diabetic person, and, and if it's uncontrolled, they cannot utilize the blood glucose. They have to utilize pro breakdown of proteins and breakdown of fats. When fats are broken down, they form fatty acids. These fatty acids lead to the formation of ketone bodies. And ke if, if there is excess of ketone bodies, that leads to ketoacidosis. So this is true. Uh, the second one, which is cephalic phase of gastric secretion is entirely under nervous control. This is also true because the cephalic phase is when it is in your head. It's you're thinking about food or, you know, you're um, having some thoughts about food. The food has not come in contact with your um, mouth or the rest of your gastrointestinal tract. So this is just the sight or the thought of food. Uh, uh, it stimulates the nervous system and brings about gastric secretion. So this is true. The st third statement which says bile salts act in a manner similar to lipase. Now this is the incorrect statement because bile salts do not act in a manner similar, similar to lipase. Lipase is the enzyme which acts on fats and causes chemical breakdown of fats, which is triglycerides into fatty, uh, fatty acids and glycerol. So fatty acids and glycerol. Now bile salts help lipase to act. So what they do is they break down. So if there is uh, some fatty food, they break down this fatty food into smaller particles and emulsify them. And then they help lipase to act on these smaller particles because if the particles were not if this food was not broken down lipase could only act on the surface up here so the center would not be di digested so they do not act in a manner similar to lipase so that's uh, so this is incorrect however if bile salts are um, uh, are not present you can understand that um, fat digestion and absorption will not occur properly because obviously lipase will not be able to act on all of the fat so some of it will not be digested so if, if lipase is absent or bile salts are absent you can see in both cases fat digestion and absorption will not occur properly but the action is not similar now let's look at this statement which says absorption of water from undigested food occurs in the large intestine now this happens to be a true statement uh, the reason being that by the time the food comes into the large intestine, all of it which enters the large intestine is now just undigested food. By, till, until the small intestine, all the digestion has occurred and absorption has occurred in the small intestine. So what is left over now is undigested food. And that is the undigested food which gets into the large intestine and forms feces. But that undigested food has a lot of water in it. And that water is absorbed from the undigested food in the large intestine. And hence, this statement is true. Now, let's look at this question, which asks, which tells you that Alice has not eaten for six days. And then you have to say which of the following reactions would not be of importance in providing ATP. So, obviously, her body has to use... Uh, other methods to provide ATP because she's not eating. So let's look at the first one which says glycogenolysis. The word lysis automatically tells you this is a catabolic reaction which means glycogen, the stored glycogen is broken down and it's going to make glucose. So this would occur and hence it will provide ATP because like you're breaking down glycogen to provide glucose and glucose is the one which will provide ATP. So this is one of the methods the body would use to provide ATP. Let's look at the next one which says gluconeogenesis. That means new ways to produce glucose. So you're producing glucose through either protein breakdown or through fat breakdown, protein or fat uh, breakdown. And these are ways that uh, glucose can be produced. And when glucose is produced, that will provide ATP. So gluconeogenesis is another way to provide ATP. The third one is lipolysis. Again, another catabolic reaction. Again, lipolysis of fat, uh, when fats are broken down, fats also can uh, provide ATP, fatty acids, as I discussed in the last 
uh, question of uh, in diabetics this is one way to provide ATP so lipolysis also occurs which is why people who starve or lose a lot of weight now the fourth one this is one way that will not provide ATP because you're synthesizing protein so when synthesis is occurring here ATP is actually being used up in this in this process and when someone is starved you do at this point you want you don't want to be providing uh, making protein because the body is not getting enough uh, food and you need a ATP to be produced so you don't have time to be making protein instead you're breaking down protein breaking down fat breaking down carbohydrates to provide ATP so in this situation protein synthesis is not one uh, is not something the body will do and secondly protein synthesis is not something which will provide ATP so because when you're synthesizing protein you're actually using up ATP so therefore the answer to this question is the last uh, choice